So welcome back aliens, I'm Navin Reddy from Thaisko Learnings and in this video we'll talk about recursion. Now if you have learned any language before, maybe C, C++ or Java, you must have seen a concept called recursion there. Now if you don't know recursion, it's very simple. Recursion simply means if you have a function called as show and if this function calls itself, I don't know for what reason but if this function calls itself, this is recursion. Okay, again you can print some statement here, example if I say print ln and if I print some statement let's say hello and then if I call this function show from your main of course this is recursion right because we are calling show and then show calls itself the moment you run this code it will go into infinite loop as you can see it is running okay you can see we got stack overflow first of all uh, because it is crossing the limit and if you can see if I, if I, if I run this multiple times we got hello 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 so the, the function is calling itself this is recursion and at the end we are also getting exception here but you might, be you might be thinking this is a wrong, this is a weird concept, right? Maybe a bad concept because we are getting exception at the end. But then if you use it properly, it's actually a very awesome concept. Now just to explain this concept, we will go for a simple example. And that example is factorial. In fact, if you refer any book or any online material, they all teach you recursion with the same concepts. Maybe Fibonacci series, maybe factorial, maybe some other concept. So here we'll be, we'll be saying how to use uh, how to do factorial using recursion but before that let's try to understand the true power of it so what will we do we will be doing here is we'll be doing factorial with the normal logic which the the way we do and then later we'll try to see rec recursion now when i say i want to find uh, i want to check if a given number how to find a factorial first of all so let's say if i say we have a number which is where num is equal to 5 and if you want to find a factorial of a 5 you should do 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 or you can do 1 into 2 into 3 into 2, uh, 4 into 5 right either, either way you will get the same output so here what i will use a for loop and then i will say we have a variable i which will be coming from 1 dot dot num so it will be from this range from 1 to num and every time you you do this let me take one more variable which which will hold the result i will say uh, fact equal to the initial value of fact would be 1 of course right because you cannot say 0 because every time you multiply you will get 0 at the end so we have to say fact equal to fact into uh, i right so at the end what you will get is 120 if I print fact here that's how you find factorial right again I'm assuming that you know how to use for loop how to how to find a factorial number so we are not here to learn factorial, right? We are here to learn about how to how to find a factorial using loop first. And if you run this code, uh, okay, we're waiting for the input. Yeah, so we, you can see we got the output as 120 here. So in the output window, we got 120. If you change this number, example, if I say seven, you will get of a number. I don't know what is what is a factorial of seven. It should be somewhere, uh, I don't know. So, uh, okay, so you, you can see we got the output as 5040. Again, you can trust me, this is the right answer. So the factorial of 7 is 5040. Now this is normal for this is normal for loop, right? How do you do this using recursion? So what you can do is, uh, again, there's one more reason why we are looking at this concept. Again, if you have seen the entire series, everywhere we are talking about difference between Java and Kotlin. How can you do something in Kotlin? And here I'm teaching you recursion from start because in the next topic we'll be talking about tail recursion, which is new to Java, which is new to Kotlin. And I just want you to be sure that you know uh, recursion at the first place, right? So we'll be converting the same example is in tail recursion. So this con this video is actually very important for you. Okay, so how do you how do you find a factorial using recursion? So what I will do here is I will define a function, and I will name this function as fact itself. Now this function will be taking a parameter and I will say this function takes a parameter num which will be of type int and it will return a uh, int value at the end so once up, once you got the calculation it will return int and so in instead of doing all these things what we'll be doing is we'll be saying hey I want to find a factorial of num that's it so this print ln will say I want a factorial of this number num that's it nothing else now from this fact you have to do the entire calculation here now, how do you do that? So what we have to do is, now everyone knows that the factorial of 0 and the factorial of 1 is 1. So here what we can do is, we can say if, we can say if, uh, if my num uh, equal to equal to 0, right? If this is a scenario, you will simply return 1. So I will say return 1, right? So we got a factorial. So when, let's say if you got this value which is 0. I know the value is 7 but then let's say we have to make sure if the value is 0 you'll return 1 
Otherwise, if the value is not zero, what we will be doing is we will be calling the function itself. Now, how do we do that? It's very simple. Just call the fact itself, right? And okay. So we'll be calling the fact itself and we'll be multiplying that with num. So we'll say num into fact and we'll say num minus one. So what it will be doing is, let's say if you, okay, I forgot to write a return statement there. So it's a return. So it's a return uh, num into a fact num minus one. Now what will happen when you pass seven here, that seven goes here, right? And then we'll, we'll do seven into six factorial right because that's what that's what we do so when you say seven we say we say seven into six factorial what is six factorial it is six into five factorial what is five factorial it is five into four factorial what is four factorial and the list goes on right at the end you will get zero which will return one i think your job is done here just just to make sure i will use a number which is five just to have a smaller number there and the moment you run this code uh i'm expecting 120 yeah can you see that we, go, we got 120 this time we are not going for a for loop we are going for a factor we are going for a recursion so what we are doing here is we are finding a factorial by calling itself so if i write a comment here what we are doing here is if i if i send a value 5 so this line is actually evaluating 5 into 4 factorial now now for this fact will call itself again so it will do 4 into 3 factorial and the list goes on at the end you will get 1 and then everything will sum up to give you the value right and the moment you run this code you can see we are getting 120 right everything everything looks good right so we are getting 120 but let's say if i have a bigger value now uh, let's say if i have a bigger value which is maybe 1000 and then if you run this code and here we go can you see that we got zero I mean, why we are getting zero here? Why not we are getting the exact answer? Maybe we can go till only 70. Let's try with 70 here. Let's see what happens. And if you run this code, you can see we are still getting zero. Now, what is happening here is when you say factorial of 70, it's actually a very big number. You can't, you can't even count that number on your fingers. So it's actually, very, it's actually a very big number. So in this scenario, when you have a very big number like this, you cannot n normally work with int, right? So just to understand this better, we will convert this into a big integer because big integer is a class in Java which supports big, bigger number, right? So we'll try to implement this with bigger big integer first and then we'll go towards tail recursion because that will make more sense then. So how to do big, big integer? That we'll see into, I mean, we'll convert this example into big integer. How to do that, we'll see in the next video.